okay, journey to the Martex spine. So uh, let's just say there have been some bumps in the road. And um, what I'm here to talk to you about today is if you're going through something similar to this, how to maybe avoid some of those bumps, okay? Um, just kind of by way of introduction, I am, I've got this techie job title. Um, I work for a techie company, um, and yet I am completely um, non-technical. <laughs> I've been working in marketing for over 20 years, and about six months ago when I got this job, um, this is the first time I've really been exposed properly to, to, to the world of MarTech. So be careful on me later on if you've got any techie questions. <laughs> Okay, Atos. Um, so the obligatory um, uh, company in one slide. So we are a multinational organisation in the world of digital services. And we have particular credentials in cyber security and the use of digital technology to drive that decarbonisation decarbonization agenda. What happened um, just before lockdown, so in January 2020, we undertook um, a big um, transformational change in the organisation. So before January 2020, we were organised really on divisional horizontal lines. And, um, and in January 2020, we adopted this new vertical model. So we had these horizontal um, business units, and then we had things like sales, marketing, operations, very geographically based. What we had to do in January 2020 is kind of attach ourselves to one of these global verticals. And in January 2020, I ended up becoming uh, the head of uh, marketing for the healthcare and life sciences sector just as we're heading into a global pandemic. So, um, so you can imagine that quite a lot of the time last year was spent on things like um, making sure that the Nightingale hospitals um, had the IT that they needed to operate and you know, making sure that remote patient consultations could happen for the first time in many cases. So um, yes, a busy, busy year last year. Okay. Martek Atos, the journey to date, the timeline slide. So 2018, so I mentioned before we kind of went global and we had this vertical model, we were organized in, in different geographical areas and I was in the UK and Ireland marketing team. And back in 2018, we realized that the Martech that we had at Atos controlled at a global level, we have, um, a global marketing team that controls all our MarTech in Atos, based out of Paris. We realised, though, in little old UK and Ireland that um, MarTech wasn't quite working for us as we needed. Um, and many reasons for that. I think in terms of kind of marketing automation, this was when GDPR had come in. I think many of the team were kind of scared to use the automation platform in case we, we mailed someone um, who, who'd requested to, to be opted out. It was very complicated to use. So we weren't really using the MarTech. We were kind of trying to sort of avoid it. And what was happening is the data contained within was therefore aging. It was not flowing, shall we say, um, according to Steve. So um, we also noticed issues with our web pages in the UK and the fact that SEO was fairly non non-existent. So we were kind of gathering this body of evidence. Uh, and the last thing we did was we undertook a customer workshop. And we asked our customers, you know, what their impressions were of the marketing that we were sending to them. And, you know, how could we do better? And they said the key word of today, which is personalization. So they said, um, personalize whatever you're sending to me, make it relevant to me. Don't send me the generic stuff. They also said, um, what we would call, give me an omni-channel experience. Um, so, you know, to Nick's point, make sure that the content has the same look, feel and tone wherever they're at in the buyer journey and whichever channel. And also they said, um, interestingly, don't talk tech. So don't tell me about technology, just tell me what you can do for my business, okay? So with all this body of evidence, we went to the global marketing team um, in 2019. And we said, hey, I think we need to change things here. It's, it's not quite working for us. 
And um, the global marketing team said, um, oh, we're a bit busy. You know, we've got other priorities. You know, um, that's really good. Yeah, we know, we know there are some issues, but, you know, we're working on other things at the moment. And, um, you know, wh why was that? Why did we have that response? I think that um, Atos is a very sales-driven organisation. And up until recently, marketing has really been seen as, an, as a supporting um, role really for sales okay so we're there to to help out um, when sales needs it so the priority hasn't been given to marketing and the resources required really to kind of um, really give marketing a go um, the other thing that happened is we went to a conference um, run by the martech um, alliance and um, actually it was through the market mark <laughs> through the MarTech Alliance, where um, they, they recommended to us Clever Touch and you know, a couple of, couple of other providers that could help us with some of our problems here. And um, we particularly started to focus on the requirement for a customer data platform. So all our data um, was just stored in different systems all over the place. We couldn't get a view of um, the customer down to that individual level at all. And, um, you know, we decided pretty much from that MarTech Alliance conference that we needed a, a customer data platform in which to pull all that data. So we have a single customer view. And ultimately, our, our aim really with the CDP, the customer data platform, is, is in the future to be able to use it to predict, you know, to predict what marketing should be pointed at which person and when. So we started to, to, to buy a customer data platform. Then there was this thing in 2020, we moved to the vertical model and all of 2020 was um, transformational change in Atos. And there was that you know, COVID-19 thing as well, um, which meant that these kind of questions kind of got parked while we helped our customers um, quickly overcome some of the issues, uh, such as making sure all their staff can work from home and things. And then the big change, January 2021, we got a new CMO. And the new CMO, he just, he just kind of got it. And we, you know, we spoke to him about the issues, some of the frustrations that we had within the marketing team. And um, he said, OK, yeah, I get it. Go sort it out. No problem. So for the first time, um, we were being listened to and we were being empowered to sort out you know, what we needed to sort out. And um, his aim is to make marketing be less of a support for sales and more as a driver of growth within the organisation. And what he saw was that MarTech was really going to underpin that. And um, because, because I've been moaning about it, he said, right, Ruth, go, go and sort it out. And so in March 2021, I, I got this MarTech type of job title and um, I had to sort it out. So um, what did I do when I stopped panicking? Um, I uh, phoned, I remember back to that MarTech uh, conference and uh, phoned uh, Clever Touch and um, Clever Touch came in and they um, ran um, a audit, an audit of all our marketing technology. Um, and, you know, if I can um, summarise what uh, the audit said, uh, it said... It's not all bad, but it's a bit of a case of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, so um, some of the MarTech uh, we have in place, and some of it we need to change, and some of it we need to buy from new. But what they've said is, instead of trying to kind of boil the ocean, Ruth, just um, really just look at these core pieces of marketing technology that you need to have in place, um, we have arterial technologies, um, but really focus, focus on what's important and make sure they're integrated. And you'll see here it's, it's called the spine. And um, basically, this is my job from now until uh, the end of next year is to put this in place. And it is a clear roadmap of what I need to do, a proper strategy, um, rather than us trying to kind of make it up. So... Um, we, have, uh, we already had um, Salesforce. We still have Salesforce as our CRM. That's, that's kind of going nowhere. Um, and we did buy that customer data platform. And it is now um, in the business and working and pulling data from um, some of these platforms. And we're using Power BI as a business intelligence platform. 
and we're reporting now out of Power BI. So we're, we're for the first time ever, being able to report on marketing effectiveness. If we're going to be the growth engine of the business, we've got to prove it right. So this is, um, you know, a, a massive step forward from where we've been. The next thing we did was change our marketing automation platform. Um, so we have moved to um, Marketo and we've started implementation um, of Marketo using um, CleverTouch. And this will be um, fully operational in our business from the 1st of March next year. So that's about half of it. <laughs> now, here goes to the stuff we kind of haven't got. So um, at the moment, we have um, our website platform, our content management system. It's um, WordPress. And um, we conducted a separate audit on our website, which basically says that WordPress is probably a little bit of a simple tool to be, um, to be at the heart of what is um, quite a complex um, matrix business. And um, really, to, to kind of Steve's point, I think we're going to be looking for an experience platform next year. Um, so that's going to be um, a big part of um, our activity next year, something where we can drive that personalization, that omni-channel experience, remembering back to what our customers want, and actually, yeah, um, buyer personas and mapping the right content to the right people. So that's going to be the job for next year. And then also a couple of other things we need to buy that we haven't got already. We currently don't have a content management platform. We need a platform where we can um, uh, plan our campaigns and that gives full visibility to everyone around the organization as to what campaign is going out when. We currently don't have this. So um, we, we're not 100% sure of absolutely everything that goes out to our customers um, at the moment because it's done on a like PowerPoint, right? Uh, so, so that gets out of date as soon as it's, uh, as soon as it's written. Uh, we also want a platform in which an average marketer, a normal person like me, can create basic content instead of having to send it off to a designer each time. So currently at the moment, we have a, um, uh, an internal agency who creates absolutely everything for us. What we can see by having a content management platform is we can alleviate some of the pressure on that agency and we can start to create basic pieces of content ourselves, albeit heavily templated. And then sales enablement platform. So, so basically everything that Nick said, copy and paste, essentially. <laughs> Um, uh, we don't know what our content usage is um, by our customers. We have about 6,000 pieces of content that's active at the moment in the organisation, of which, as a guess, about half of that, just to be conservative, probably isn't being consumed at all by our customers. But until we get the platform, we can't track that and we can't tell. Okay? And also, to kind of Nick's point, um, when I've um, shown the sales team um, demos of sales enablement platforms, they're, they're just biting my hand off for it at the moment. They're just desperate to get it. I don't think I'm going to have a problem in implementing that one. So that's, that's the blueprint. That's the way forwards. So we're about halfway through. So lessons learned so far. First of all, um, secure at least one exec level champion. Um, it was only when we got our new CMO who got it and empowered us to do something about it that we could start making a move on this and sorting it out. The next thing. Um, very early doors. Identify and work with key internal stakeholders and the doers supporting them. So what I mean here is um, uh, finding out who the decision makers are in procurement, in data protection, in legal in recruitment, in all of those individuals that will help you buy and implement a new MarTech platform, identify them early. And if you know, there's any issues, you then have your exec level champion to be able to impress the importance of the project upon them. The next thing that worked for me was creating strategic and operational steer codes. So for each of the new pieces of MarTech, I have a monthly strategic steer code of the great and the good. And what they do is they support me to drive through new MarTech and the new initiatives. I then have weekly operational steer codes of the doers. So just making sure that um, everything is on track. I always ask every week, what are the red flags? 
tell me where I'm going to trip up, tell me what's going to go wrong, tell me what's going to delay this, tell me what the problem's going to be. And by identifying the red flags with these people who know, that's the way to keep on track with your journey. What else have I got? Um, on board, uh, oh yeah, this is the recruitment thing. Um, as we know, recruitment is an issue with MarTech at the moment. Um, I, I should have started my recruitment as, you know, back, in, back in March when I didn't even know what I was doing. You've got to start finding the right people for, for your organisation that have the right knowledge. If you don't start early um, and you really need someone, then outsource the problem. Just go to an agency who can support you with this. That buys you time to do the recruitment and, and grow your own as well within the organisation. I currently have one member of staff working for me. Um, and um, yeah, don't underestimate the impact of new MarTech on all of these things here are to do with people and process. None of it is particularly to do with the technology. And what we've found within the Marcoms community at Atos is we've got some pockets of really great knowledge. Um, but in terms of kind of the wider community, if we bring in MarTech that, um, you know, forces us to run campaigns that match the buyer journey, um, you know, we'll, we'll actually start running marketing campaigns that are going to be a lot more effective than they have been before. So MarTech is being used to, to really upskill the wider community. And I've just finished um, building a training plan that underpins all of this. It's not just super user training, but kind of the wider, how to run a digital marketing campaign, how to run a campaign that matches the customer journey. So, so that's kind of, those are kind of my main lessons learned, the main points. I think, you know, to kind of, by way of conclusion, I'm about halfway through at the moment. And I think what you should probably do is call me back next year and then I can fill you in and let you know, um, <laughs> let you know how I've got on. Um, and let's see if, <laughs> if I'm still here and still sane. So, um, there we go.